yo. All right, so before I get set up, quick intro. Um, so this will be a pair story. Um, spoiler alert, um, I didn't almost die from my paramotor. So this is before paramotoring, but it's a cool story nonetheless, and it was life-changing for me, so I'm gonna share it. Uh, next, some other updates. Uh, I haven't flown in a while. I haven't done much of anything in a while, uh, except work and be with the family. So our youngest son is super colicky, so um, it's been a lot of like, but not gonna bore you with that. Um, other updates. I sold my 20 meter Hadron, so I've been hanging on to it for quite a while. Um, and finally somebody was interested in it and I was able to sell it. Funny story about it was it's actually it sold it to the same guy that I sold my old paramotor to. So um, I'm just gonna keep dumping all my uh, hand-me-downs on him and uh, he's happy, I'm happy. So congrats Caleb on your new wing. Uh, be safe with it, it's fast and it rolls fast, but you know. Um, all right, and next, um, I hope I post this before the 18th, but on the 18th I'll be on the paragliding talk show, at least that's the plan for now. Um, so tune into that. And, oh, and I bought a new wing. So it's not here yet, but I'm super stoked about it. A lot of you guys from the Paramotor Facebook page probably already know what wing I bought. Uh, I'm not gonna announce it here, uh, cause I, I'm super excited about it. And I kinda wanna do a little like reveal video and uh, like a first flight and then I'll, I'll review it once I get some, some hours on it. But uh, that's the update for now. So I'm gonna get set up. I have over two hours before sunset, uh, but I don't know if I wanna fly all night. So I'm gonna get things set up. I'm gonna watch this wind for a while. It's shifted like 90 degrees since I've been here. So I'm gonna like, give it a minute to calm down and then I'm gonna get in the air, so um, yeah, see you up there. Oh yeah, and whoa, <laughs> I got my ppgsmoke.com uh, chase cam. So I literally just snapped this together before I came here, not even tied it up yet. Uh, I have no idea if the length is gonna be right, and I know the balance will be off because I'm using a GoPro Hero. It's all I have extra right now that I'm willing to snap onto an untested uh, uh, chase cam. So we'll be giving this a shot. I don't expect good footage out of it, but I at least expect a starting point. So if I get good footage, you'll see it. If I don't, you won't. Peace. So I think we're recording. Yeah. So the wind has been consistently inconsistent, but it's been more consistently out of the opposite direction that I thought it would be out of. So I got to walk ahead of me. The wind's very light. With other wings, my older wings, this 20 meter head on, uh, I could launch with a slight tailwind. I could do it. With the 18 meter, if there's the least bit of wind, I need it. No wind, I can do any amount of tailwind. It's like so, so close on the edge, you can't do it, so. I need what little breeze that is. Good news is that that breeze is not very strong, so there's not going to be any significant rotor coming over the trees on the backside over there, which is always a problem. All right, we'll finish getting set up. We'll catch back up. And of course, I forgot to hit record for my launch, but it went fine. That's the field I just launched from. It was no end by the time I took off, which I have to. I didn't expect it, but I understand where it came from. We had this low pressure that I thought would be further east or toward the coast. And it's supposed to move in as the night came on, but it just moved in sooner. So when I get back, if I'm right, the wind should be coming out of the other direction and I should feel some turbulence uh, during this flight. <coughs> um, yeah, and also, no chase cam. I definitely left the camera I was gonna use for that at home. So, God damn it! but whatever. All right, so here's my I almost died one time story. Uh, this happened, uh, this will be August eight or nine years ago now. I think it's eight, 11, here are the two. Yeah, eight years ago now. Doesn't seem that long, because it still hurts. <laughs> but, um, so as far back as I can remember, uh, I've loved two things. Um, I've loved motorcycles, and I have loved aviation, so until I found paramotoring, aviation really seemed like a far off goal. That seemed like something I could just have to be happy with my flight simulator and uh, I'll fly later type of thing. So motorcycles were attainable, but I had the money to buy one, but my, my mom hates motorcycles, so at the time, you know, 16, 17 years old, I was living at home. 
And she said, well, if you buy a motorcycle, you got to move out. So I never did. Then I went to college and tried to buy a motorcycle. And then she said, well, I'm helping you pay your rent. So unless you want to pay your full rent, you can't buy a motorcycle. So I didn't buy a motorcycle. But I graduated college and started making money. And I was, you know, finally on my own, more or less, right? Started paying my own bills. All she could say at this point was, please don't buy a motorcycle. I don't like them. So me being me, I bought a bike. And I had problems with the bike from the uh, day I bought it. A whole bunch of issues, taking it apart, rebuilding it. It was a Honda CBR 600 RR. So it was a, it was a quick little bike. Uh, and, I, and I knew how to ride, you know, not professionally, but I knew how to ride a bike. So one day, um, I was doing some work on my bike at the time. I lived in an apartment. And um, my wife, who was my girlfriend at the time, was upstairs taking a shower. And I was downstairs working on my bike in the parking lot. I was diagnosing some type of uh, vibration, I remember. And I thought it was stemming from the windscreen. So I had bought a new windscreen. I was replacing it, some other parts associated with it. And uh, I was wearing a t-shirt, shorts, sandals, you know, just a nice summer day. So I was just out there working. I said, oh, and I got the new windscreen put in. I figured, well, uh, I'll take it around the block just to test it and see. Um, I need some altitude. Hang on. All right. So I just got the new windscreen put in. I want to drive around the block to test it out. So I hop on the bike. And, I mean, this route that I was planning to take was literally, I don't know, a half mile the most. It was just leaving one entrance of my apartment complex, going out to the uh, intersection of a highway, turning left, and then turning back into my complex. Uh, real quick loop. So I was like, well, I'm not going to run up and grab my helmet. Classic. What could happen, right? That's, that's literally what I thought. I was like, I'll be right back. No big deal. So that's about as far as I remember. Um, I remember having that thought, and I didn't remember having any of these thoughts for a long time. They kind of just slowly came back to me. But Next thing I know, I wake up on an operating table. I wasn't being operated on, but it was like a flat table with a big light in my eye and a bunch of people standing around me. And I remember being in excruciating pain. Like, I was laying on this table, and I woke up, and it was I was just sort of like screaming um, because it was a rock-hard table, and I had just been in a motorcycle wreck, obviously. Um... So what had happened was I had stopped to make my left turn, and it was a two-lane highway. I'll I'll overlay some images here, but it was a two-lane highway. So traffic going one way, traffic going the other way. So to turn left in Indiana, you just slow down in your lane, turn your turn signal on, and wait for traffic to stop coming from the other direction, and you turn left. And on the side of across from every, like, intersection, there's a little part of the road that dips out, so people can go around you, which makes no sense. It's the same amount of concrete. Why wouldn't you just divert the traffic to the right and give you a turn lane like everywhere else in the world? I don't know. But that's the way they do it there. It's stupid. So I stopped. And what had happened was uh, a car swerved around me, right? So I was coming to stop. They didn't slow down. They swerved around me. And the car behind me, I guess, just didn't see me, didn't know why this guy was swerving. And it was an F-350, um, and he just plowed through me at full speed. And uh, obviously totaled my bike, sent me flying into a field, um, and that's what happened. So the events after this, I have to get from uh, even this. All this I just read from the police report. But evidently I was laying kind of in the ditch on the side of the road, and... Uh, this girl saw it happen. She was driving to work at the Walgreens, which it happened right in front of. She saw it happen. And she came, uh, immediately pulled over, ran to me, and I don't remember saying this, obviously, but all I was saying to her was, call Lauren, call Lauren, I need to call Lauren, something, 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 right? Uh, But I guess I just kept repeating myself. And um, 
So she went at my phone. I must have been able to give her my password. And, again, I don't remember any of this. And then she um, called my uh, girlfriend, who's my wife now. And you got to imagine this from my wife's point of view, right? She's in the shower, gets a phone call from me, from a strange woman, um, saying, your husband's been in a motorcycle accident. And as far as Lauren knew, my wife, as far as Lauren knew, I was, you know, at home. I was downstairs working on my bike. I wasn't out. So it's just confused the hell out of her. It shocked her. She was, you know, and, I, you know, the lady was telling her, look, he's laying on the side of the road. I called 911. Actually, I think she called her from the ambulance. I, I'm not sure what happened, but she called her. It was absolute hell on my wife. And she, um, you know, it, it was it was horrible. It was, it was a horrible call to get for her. And I still feel bad about it to this day. So anyway, they rushed me to the hospital. Injuries were uh, a broken tailbone, which that was the main reason I was screaming when I was laying on that table. Because when you lay in your tailbone, when it's broken in a bunch of places, it hurts. I was like a broken tailbone, a collapsed lung, um, a bunch of broken ribs, my spleen had ruptured, uh, road rash everywhere, a concussion, and, you know, obviously sprains and dings everywhere else. So, um, I had to have surgery for my spleen, I had to have all this kind of shit. I was in the hospital for like three, three weeks, had to walk with a walker for a while. It sucked so bad. Um, and to this day, I still have a ton of injuries that stem from that. You know, I got, I got real bad hip problems and a bunk shoulder on my left side, um, which I broke my collarbone on that side. I had another motorcycle accident as well, but that was a dirt bike. My own fault. Um, but, yeah, that's my story. So I wasn't wearing a helmet. Uh, really, really lucky to be alive. That was about as close as you could come to dying, right? Getting smoked by a truck. So when I was in the hospital, I was obviously emotional. My mom and the rest of my family all came to visit me and my wife came and, they, you know, more or less maybe promised never to ride on the road again, which at the time I had no problem with. Uh, I since regret that. Um, I suppose I would buy a bike now because I have two sons. So that's a risk I probably wouldn't be willing to take. But... You know, I, I missed it, so I bought dirt bikes. I went, you know, Lauren didn't like that, but she understood the risk was different. There's no F-350s in the woods. So, uh, it's kind of long and short how I got into paramotors. But, yeah, that's my story, man. Um, super stoked I'm not dead. Yeah. I got, I don't really know what else to say about it, but, uh, yeah. It's a part of me, so now you know. All right, I'm going to turn on some music, and it is buttery smooth out here, you guys. I had some bumps on the way over here, but I'm going to enjoy this weather. It's not even glove weather anymore. It's beautiful out. It's butter smooth. I'm going to turn on some tunes to just enjoy the rest of the flight. So, yeah, man. Thanks for listening if you made it this far. Peace. The wind shift I was talking about, it happened. And it it was, I don't know, stronger than I thought it was, so it kind of spooked me. This is a 15 mile an hour headwind or more. So when I launched it, was zero, so I called it. So I also did a, a speed test. Um, I'm going to post that in a different video, but I did test out the uh, all the speed configurations for the Hadron. Uh, someone asked me uh, how fast is this wing, and so I never actually measured it. 
or I hadn't actually measured it until today, so <clears throat> I'll post that video next. But it's quick. My ribbon is dead, and my windstock is dead, which means everything that's happening is happening right here. Okay, there's a gust. There's a little bit of lift. It's knocked around. Oh boy. See boy. I wonder if I should land further away before I have clean air. Yeah, the wind just shifted 180 degrees. I just watched it shift. So, I have no desire to land right there um, at all. So, I'm going to put it down where I think I can find some clear air. I think I can find some over here. Oh my god, this sucks. Oh man. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Very, very pleased with that. I didn't enjoy that landing at all. But all's well that ends well, so I'm on the ground, I'm happy, I guess. So we got a badass helicopter coming in to land right now. Mitch, is that you? Oh, baby! Dude. <laughs> Bad fucking ass. Dude, that was cool. So that was an Apache just came in and did a touch and go on the uh on the runway. I've never seen that at this airport before. That's fucking cool. Mitch is watching this video right now saying, dude, it's just an Apache, who cares? I care, Mitch. Dude, I want one of those. By the way, I got on the ground like right before this dude showed up. Right before. I landed, and then I heard on the radio him calling, he's coming over the trees. That would have scared the shit out of me if I was up there. Alright, I'm done. Unless he calls, he's gonna go for another pass, then I'm running back out here. <laughs> 